Uh, we are going to discuss botulism in this video. And uh, botulism is a very interesting uh, condition that can occur mostly in uh, pediatrics uh, on the licensing exams. But um, it can also occur in other populations. So what is it? Is responsible uh, for muscle paralysis. And I'll explain why, but I just wanted to quickly tell you the sort of the, the very brief summary. Um, so what does that mean, muscle paralysis? Well, think of it as the opposite of muscle contraction. Muscle contraction can't happen. Uh, muscles can't contract because of this toxin. Now, very quickly, before I get into this topic, I wanted to talk very quickly about something called Botox. And I'm sure many of you have heard of it. It's a very popular cosmetic uh, procedure. It's a medication that people in, have injected into their skin to treat wrinkles. Now, what's that all about? Well, what Botox essentially is, is the botulinum toxin. So wrinkles are basically muscle contractions, right? So if you give Botox, you s sort of do the opposite. You make these muscle contractions, which are wrinkles, paralyzed. And that's why you get rid of the wrinkles. A very interesting uh, way of taking something that's bad and marketing it to do something good. Anyhow, so let's get back into Clostridium and the botulinum toxin. So why... Why is this happening? When you have the botulinum toxin in your body, what happens? Well, very quickly, without going into too much detail, I wanted to draw the, a muscle cell and show how it reacts, or not reacts, but interacts uh, with the neural uh, neurons. This is a neuron, this is the axon. Now at this end, you have the release of a neurotransmitter. And ACH, as many of you can probably figure out, is acetylcholine. And acetylcholine is a very, very important neurotransmitter. And it's involved in proper muscle function. It goes out from the neuron, and there's these acetylcholine receptors on the muscle cell that catch it and the muscle then is able to contract so the acetylcholine neurotransmitter essentially is involved in proper function of a muscle what botulinum toxin does is it blocks this it blocks the release of acetylcholine so you don't get acetylcholine and coming out of the neuron and interacting with the muscle cell. So if that happens, that leads to the inability of contraction. So the muscles can't contract. And when the muscles can't contract, you get something known as paralysis. And uh, they give a special name, flaccid paralysis. And that is essentially the, the fundamental problem in, in botulinum or botulism so why would somebody get this? If somebody's normal and then all of a sudden they develop botulism, what is the reason? Well, there's three ways. You can either get it through food, you can either get it through a wound, or you can either, or a baby can get it. Um, interestingly, the baby gets it from food also by ingesting honey. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. Food, the most common uh, type of food are canned foods. Canned foods, unfortunately, can, not saying all canned foods have this, but canned foods can unfortunately carry um, this toxin. Um, the good news is that if you cook the food uh, at very high temperatures, you can kill the toxin. And in, in particular, what you're doing is you're killing the spores uh, and that prevents this from happening. So what are the symptoms? Well, we talked a little bit about the, one of the symptoms. That's paralysis, probably the, the biggest muscle paralysis. 
and it also infects the respiratory muscles and that actually causes respiratory failure so it's actually a very serious problem if this occurs the muscles of respiration are not able to properly uh, uh, work and that can lead to severe um, problems constipation is another nonspecific uh, uh, symptom and um, there's other ones that they tend to list in clinical vignettes like ptosis which is drooping of the eyelid and there's another one that's very very commonly listed as a symptom and that's floppy floppy baby they use this now what does that mean floppy baby well there's a picture of this at the very beginning of the video I don't know if you noticed that before you click play essentially what that means is a baby that has very poor muscle tone hypotonia and that allow that makes it so that the baby can basically can't really contract their muscles when you're trying to pull the baby up um, and th that's known as floppy baby so how you diagnose this very difficult diagnosis um, but fortunately there is a way to isolate the organism which is Clostridium botulinum in the stool the toxin and that's a very special test that's done in the laboratory if this is suspected and the treatment well fortunately there's something called an antitoxin to fight the toxin and it's given a name equine uh, this toxin unfortunately doesn't really um, it doesn't inactivate the toxin that's already present but it, what what it can do is it can help or slow the progression um, of this condition and uh, basically the hope is that um, with time the nerve endings are able to regenerate but that can take weeks to months another very important part of the treatment is intubation because the respiratory muscles are involved so let's take a look at some uh, vignettes eight-month-old baby presents to the ER with one day history of poor feeding and generalized weakness the mother states that she often feeds the baby honey to pacify her the toxin responsible for this presentation works by which of the following mechanisms well if you rewind back in this video you'll see me trying to explain that this toxin blocks the release of acetylcholine from the nerve terminal so that it can't interact properly with the muscle cells and that eventually causes muscle paralysis and the last one a four-month-old infant presents with failure to thrive progressive muscle muscular weakness and poor head control on questioning the mother states that she typically feeds the baby soy based formula sweetened with honey which of the following organisms is most likely to be responsible for the child's presentation I, I like this uh, description poor head control that's referring to the baby's floppiness floppy baby I also like this question because it gives you four types of clostridium there's actually even one more there's five I think now you might get confused by this say well I have no idea but interestingly each types of clostridium have their own uh, disease and own um, symptomatology and now this video of course we were talking about the first one clostridium botulinum so that's the correct answer a